This is a video presentation titled, How can digital data be commoditized and used as money? Well, first of all, there must be a network, represented by this oval shape. And the network must have multiple operations economically sustaining it. And each operation must be independent of the other, so that if something happens to one, it doesn't affect all the others. And the way to make sure that each operation is independent of the next is to ensure that they are economically competitive to one another, represented by this squiggly line. Next, the network must have something of economic value within it that can be extracted that the various operations compete for. In the case of a digital network, this token is called Bitcoin, and the supply must be fixed so that it cannot be inflated or deflated by any controlling party. The supply must be distributed through an economic process, meaning those who sustain the network must compete for it in order to extract it. In Bitcoin, each individual block contains the block reward, which is a specific allocated supply of Bitcoin. To economically incentivize miners to join the network sooner rather than later, the block reward continues to get cut in half every 210,000 blocks. The block reward initially started at 50 Bitcoins, then went down to 25, then 12.5, and we're currently at 6.25 Bitcoins per block. Next, the network must have unbounded scale capacity, so that an unlimited number of users can use the network without any limitations or restrictions. This is achieved by an uncapped block size before the block is initially created. The Bitcoins themselves must have a use case, and in the case of the Bitcoin network, the use case is using the network that the Bitcoins initially came from. So in the case of the Bitcoin network, the Bitcoin network is used in the same way that the internet is used, for people uploading their digital content, such as precious family photos or wedding videos. And once uploaded onto the Bitcoin network, they are there indefinitely forever, where the information can never be cracked, hacked, altered, changed or deleted, meaning whoever it was that uploaded the content owns and controls that content. And last of all, this process that we've just gone through must be locked so that it can never change. If this protocol is locked, it means that no one can change it and therefore no one controls it. So to recap on this, a commoditized data network must be economically competitive. There must be a chain of digital signatures for common accountability so that users of the network are accountable to one another rather than a centralized third party. There must be a fixed supply of tokens. There must be unbounded scale and the protocol must be locked. Once you have a commoditized protocol, the network itself must then go through the process of commoditization in order to give its tokens economic value. This process of commoditization is a period of neutral organic growth. This means that there must have been an equal, common and reasonable opportunity for anyone and everyone to start the network themselves. And with the Bitcoin network, this was achieved by the Bitcoin white paper being released on the 31st of October 2008. And after a reasonable, equal and common opportunity had been provided for anyone and everyone to start the network, the network must then have been started under a pseudonym, so that whoever it was that started the network didn't have any central point of influence over its neutral organic growth. And this is why the author of the white paper and the man who started the Bitcoin network himself used a pseudonym, and that name was Satoshi Nakamoto. The question would then remain of how much time would be required in order for the network to be classified as a commodity, in order for the centralized starting point to be diluted enough. In the case of the Bitcoin network, Satoshi Nakamoto decided that 10 years of neutral organic growth would be enough for the network to be classified as a commodity for the reason being that there is a 0.01% chance that the network would actually grow for 10 years without any central point of influence. So it was only after 10 years that the Bitcoin network could actually be classified as a commodity, because the network can only be accessed through the use of Bitcoin. If something is useful, it is valuable. If something is useless, it is worthless. And when a commodity monopolizes a market due to its ability to be used as a medium of exchange, it becomes a monopoly commodity and recognized as money. Digital data can only be commoditized one way, which means there will only be one digital commodity. Bitcoin is the foundation layer of all future digital technology secured and underpinned by economic principles. And since the entire world now runs on digital data, Bitcoin is likely to become the most valuable commodity on Earth. To find out more, you can search for another video I've made entitled Bitcoin, the most valuable commodity on Earth. You can start your Bitcoin journey and take custody of your digital assets today at rockwallet.com. 
and include Bitcoin SV, the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin. I wish you love and light and all the best in everything.